Well, let's move on forward. Now in this video, what I would like to talk about is life cycle hooks. Now life cycle hooks is again a big part of Angular and we've been using it a lot in these lectures. So let's try to understand them in depth. Now my personal view, there are eight type of life cycle hooks, but you really need to use only a couple of them. The rest is great to use, but normally in enterprise applications, you don't use them. There's different ways of structuring code, so you don't have to use lifecycle hooks. And there's a better way of maintain and manage your data without using all the lifecycle hooks. Now let's talk about the summary of this lecture. Now there are eight stages of component life cycles. Each lifecycle component goes in a certain order. The first thing that actually gets called in when a component gets initialized is the constructor. But the constructor is not a lifecycle hook. It's back from JavaScript. In a constructor, you normally what you do is you define your dependencies. It's where you inject your dependencies. You should not ever do any kind of data manipulation in your constructor. Now, your first lifecycle hook that gets called is actually ngonit. Now, a lot of people don't know about ngonit. It's a tricky question that gets asked in your interviews. Which lifecycle hook gets called first? And normally what you do as a person, you would reply saying ngonit. And hence why they try to test you, see if you actually know how it actually works. The truth is that ngon changes get called first, but it only gets called first if it's a child component, hence where the trick lies. Now, the three main lifecycle hooks that I mentioned I'd like to talk about today, which is a very important. Ngon changes, ngonit, and ngon destroy. Let's go into more in the coding to understand more about the lifecycle hooks. So the great lifecycle hook, you have to use it by using a keyword, and what you do is implements. The work, now, the keyword implements, extend, and interfaces, I'll explain you in another lesson. For, now, for the basic understanding, implements is basically telling your app component what type of interface. So, you can, so this way, you can include an interface that app component can follow. Now, an in interface, in our scenario, is a lifecycle hook. And once I implement it, you can see that it's imported from Angular Core. Now, this, what it does, this interface is basically defines the rules. It's a blueprint for your app component. It sets the rules of how it should work, how should the settings be. Now, if we look at on, on our knit, we can see here it's an interface. It comes from lifecycle hooks from our Angular uh, packages. And we can see it exports an interface on, on it, which, which you need to have now is ng on knit method. So it's interface defined. So now our ID is highlighting a mistake. If you put ng on it, we have tapped into ng on it. Great, so we can work with it. Next thing would be on destroy. Again, we've tapped into it. And next thing would be on changes. More details about how inheritance works and in near 6.5 where you don't have the class and the and then in ES6, you have a class and then you can extend things and the way it extends through prototype. I'll explain that in all another lesson. That's more again for the advanced users. What I've just said, I hope it doesn't confuse you, but what I want is basically is for you to understand is why are you writing the keyword implements and why do you need to define it before and why would it highlight something you know, is wrong so you, don't, so you don't get confused. But for now, as I said before, implements is just an interface. It's just it's making sure that you're following the right rules. Right, so I'm just going to select and paste this in to speed up the lesson. And these are just console logs so we can track the lifecycle hook on each component easier. Now I've done the same thing for our header component, which is in our app component here. Now our header component stays the same, and I've just put the lifecycle hooks here below, and I've implemented the lifecycle hooks as I did in the app component, and then I've imported it above. Now remember, header is a child component, app component is a parent. Now what happens if when I run it, just refresh and run it, you can see the app component gets called on ng init, but it's got no ng changes because the constructor is called and then ng and then the constructor gets called and then ng init gets called. There's, it's a parent, so there's no ng changes. The header component gets ng changes because A it's got props and B it's got child, and then it's got header component ng init, it's run. Okay, so how do I do the destroy? ng init changes, how do I do destroy? Well, destroy is you have to destroy the component. So how do you do that? In app components, we can have a button, which will be a click, when you click on it, and it will be toggle app header. Not app header, but toggle header. That is a method, custom method that I just created. And it will be toggle header. Now, toggle header, what we'll do is we need to define the method, of course, here. 
And we need a prop. What kind of prop we need? We basically need toggle state, which will be a boolean, and at the beginning it will be false. What will this toggle state do? Well, in toggle state, we can in app header, we can have an ngf. Now, ngf I de described over the previous lesson. ngf is to show it or not show it. So if it's false, actually, by default, I want to have it to true, because I want to show it at the beginning. And then when I call the toggle header method in my app component, I would basically assign the opposite state of it, doing a toggle on, off, on, off. So now that we have loaded these type of states, if I refresh it again, we see the same lifecycle hooks. Now if I do toggle header, you will see the header component being destroyed. If I click it back on, it gets initialized with the ng changes first and then ng init. So that's how the lifecycle hooks work. Now, there's a couple of things that noobs do at the beginning of encoding. You never ever in your constructor ever put any kind of data logic. Now, constructors in app component or in a header, doesn't matter. We can define app component. You can define a constructor, but you never do any logic inside. So what constructors are depending on is to, is to include dependencies. So you can have a dependency. We created a user service before. We can take that user service. We can go into app component module, include user service like this. Import it, and then on ng on net style lifecycle we can talk to it or do call its method, uh, whatever method it has, and so on. So this is where you would actually use, or this is where you actually speak to your service. And then if you do a subscribe in ng or destroy, it's normally done for cleaning up. You normally destroy your subscriptions, but to be honest, if you have implemented a subscription correctly, you actually don't need to destroy it. To be honest. On this destroying is when you're lit, on G, ng on destroy you would use normally if you're subscribing to an event and you're waiting for new events all the time. Normally, what I've seen in com even in complex apps is you subscribe to an event, you get the first data you need, the router state, I don't know, get some data from the state management. You get the first data and that's enough to work for everyone. You don't need the latest one. Talking about Subscribing and unsubscribing is in another lesson. It's all about observables. The way I've seen how you professionally or properly do your observables, and there's different ways of doing it. So, okay, I'll remove this. We have understood the toggle, we understood different states. So, to summarize a couple of things, there are eight lifecycle hooks. You normally use these three lifecycle hooks very often. The rest of them, uh, you can share a link. I don't, have, I don't use them that much, they're not being needed. Construction is good for accessing injecting, but you don't manipulate or do anything inside of the constructor. You don't especially don't call an API inside a constructor. ONG changes get called before on it if there if it's a child component. So in overall, what are life cycles there for? So we so it creates the component, it renders the component, it creates and renders the component's children, checks when a component data bound properties change, and destroys the component before removing from the DOM. Angle allows you to tap in all these lifecycle hooks and react to them accordingly. Hence why lifecycle hooks are amazing. And you can see it also in React where they've introduced in 16.8 React hooks. So the three, so the, th so the three lifecycle hooks that we talked about, engine and changes, executes every time the value of the input property changes. The hook method receives a simple change object. Now that we have looked a little bit at the lifecycle hooks, let's look at exactly the ng on changes and how does it work. So ng on changes, if we now had a component, we've got the ng on changes, ng on changes lifecycle hook, and we can do change, and then it's part of simple changes, the type simple changes. That will get imported from Angular Core. Now you can console log out the change. Now when you first initialize the ng on change, it will see the simple change, it will get you the prop. And the prop will have two things. The two things are the current value and the previous value. Now the previous value is undefined because there was nothing defined before and then it was defined a new type of menu. Now what happens if we actually want to change it? So in our app component, we can pass in a new data. So let's do a new button here, which will be a click again. And let's do an update, update menu. So what that will do is the update menu, when you will click on it, it will swap the data and change it. So we will take 
the user menu. And now I'm using something here, Complex. It's a spread operator from ES6. I can pass in the user menu that I have. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new data object would be team and T's and C. And that will be my, I'm spreading these objects from here. And I'm basically, I'm binding this data list here, which is a spread operator, and I'm putting it together with this one in a new array. So if we just refresh this page, now that just refreshing it, we can see our three items. If I do update menu, what has happened is now we have team and TC added to the menu. And we have a lifecycle hook. So first time ng changes told us that previous value that wasn't. So we just have a scroll here. There isn't a so in previous you can see there isn't a change in the previous. I'll just enlarge the screen. So you can see in the previous value that was undefined, so there wasn't a change there. And in the new one that we just updated, we can see that the previous was dashboard about us and contact us, and the current value is the team and TC is added to it. So we have tracked the change that's happened through basically we have tracked. We basically we've tracked the change of the prop that has been updated. Now, when you start out, you do a lot of data manipulation when the prop's being changed. You change the data, you manipulate it, and then you try to manipulate the, the view, the, the HTML. You, when you become more experienced, you normally don't do that. You do it a little bit differently. You have specific service files that you manipulate with the data, and if there is anything, you manipulate the data there, and then you pass in the new data into the component, and it renders it. You don't, leave, you don't really need NGO changes. NGO changes maybe you would need if there is something that's real, t I don't know. I've used this a couple of times before. I think there's no need anymore to use it. Manipulate your data somewhere else and then pass some clean data into your component. Anyway, you know what NG changes are, you know what NG on it is, and now you know what NG destroy is. So, summary. So NG on changes executes every time a value of an input property changes. The hook method receives a simple change object container containing current and previous property values. This is called, cool, and this is called cool before ngonit. You can also look through the changes and actually store each previous change and the new change. But ngonit executes after construction and after ngon changes hook for the first time. It is most commonly used for component initialization and retrieving data from a database. You can start out as a beginner to retrieve data from the database in the ngonit lifecycle hook. But normally as an expert or a pro level developer, you use your ngonit to subscribe to the state or subscribe to the new data. Engine, engine destroy executes just before the angle destroys a component and generally is used for performing a cleanup. Now I hope this, I hope this video is very clearly explained and was nicely compact for you guys. It's clarified the three different kind of lifecycle hooks. If you want more details about the other five lifecycle hooks, I recommend you looking at Angular, Angular online documentation. But, but from my side guys, I don't think it's needed for this video. So let's wrap up the video guys and let's move into the next lecture.